Welcome artists to Monet Cafe Studio and this lesson where I combine two of my favorite mediums and I'm going to tell you why they work great together. Watercolor is truly one of the most luminous mediums and pastels are one of the most brilliant and gorgeous with color. I'll be sharing about my products and also this lovely little watercolor set that's become one of my favorites. This is one of my hundreds of free lessons that I have here on YouTube and the only price of admission is to please go ahead and click that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and leave me a comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this lesson. Also, if you'd like to leave this video a tip, I have a way in my comments section that you can click to buy me a coffee. It's just a way that you can tip this video. All right, let's dive right in. I used a beautiful reference image from unsplash.com. I chose just to paint the one window, so I cropped it. If you're a patron on my Patreon page, you will get this cropped image. Now, I'm not using watercolor paper for this lesson, although I have combined watercolor and pastels with watercolor paper before. In this case, I'm using a pastel paper. It's called Pastel Premier. It's a nice sanded paper. It's obviously water friendly, and I'm going to be applying watercolor directly to this surface. And I wanted to examine this photograph a little more closely. The elements that I loved, that I was really drawn to, is the gorgeous reflection of the sky in the window panes and that beautiful blue teal color in the shutters. And here's the little watercolor set that I used for the whole watercolor painting, underpainting it's called. It's by Core, Q-O-R. And it's a sweet little set that I find has some of the most vibrant colors. It comes with one of these little color cards you can fill out, I highly recommend that. Watercolors look very different applied with water than they do in their little pans like this. See how dark they look here? But these are some gorgeous colors and really they combine to make a whole rainbow of colors. So this little set is great for travel and more. I will have all of the products that I mentioned in the description of this video. For this first stage of watercolor and this watercolor underpainting, you're obviously going to need some water and uh, some brushes. I didn't end up using that large brush there. Sometimes I like a textural brush. And this is a Princeton Velvet Touch. I love this brush. It's a number eight round. Um, I end up going to a larger brush though. Um, you'll see that later. First, I'm going to get in a sketch. I'm just going to use a pencil. Any pencil will work. I like this 4H pencil um, because it's a lighter uh, lead color and uh, I don't want really dark lead or uh, pencil on the sketch. Now, over on my Patreon page, I go over a lot of the sketching process. When you're creating a painting of something that has a lot of perspective elements, like a window like this, um, you wanna get things right perspectively. So I give some of my little tips on how I made this window. Notice my painting surface is larger than my reference image. So I wanted to make um, the window larger, the actual painting larger. So I had um, some little ways I do some mark making that allows me to do that. Now this one, uh, while I do measuring in this, I don't measure as much as I did in my previous video where I actually show you like a grid method. Uh, this one was a little bit more freehand, but still with a little bit of measuring. So let's jump into the painting process. And notice I don't have much of a detailed sketch. I didn't even fill in all of those flowers. And uh, I'm going to mix some colors right now. This is an ultramarine blue at the top. Uh, the one underneath is a cyan or a type of like a cyan blue. It's more teal. So I combined those two colors and uh, it made a nice pretty color for these shutters. And I realized I needed a larger brush, like I mentioned, so I switched to a 12 round. It's the Princeton Art and Brush Company, not the Velvet Touch. Again, product links are in the description of this video. Now that little watercolor palette had a little small area for mixing the colors. So I switched to my uh, white plate. I just like to use it to mix in a big puddle of color so that I don't have to remix it. I know I've got to paint these two shutters and uh, I want enough paint so I have a consistent similar color on both shutters. And I'm just really loosely applying this. Um, one of the tricks, if you're not used to watercolor, um, to get the hang of is the amount of water to paint ratio. And that just takes practice. So what did I do here? Rather than painting around the flowers uh, that are uh, cascading into the shutter, I just took a paper towel and kind of blotted out where some of them are. It makes it nice and loose and impressionistic. And so here I am getting my other shutter in. And remember, this is an underpainting. Now, while I'm doing some of this, I wanna talk a little bit about 
why, and just doing the same technique over here, about why do I combine watercolor and pastel? Well, when I have a light and luminous uh, image or scene that I'm wanting to represent, I just loved this window. It looked like the sun was shining so bright on the building and the flowers. I know that one of the most light and luminous mediums is watercolor. Now, why is that so? Well, it's because it's a transparent medium. It's see-through. Even this darker purple I'm applying now to the little insides of the window frames, uh, even though it's a little darker, it's you can still see through it and see the white of the paper. Uh, eventually, you could layer enough to where it just gets darker and darker and darker, but the initial layers are very luminous. Look at those window panes with that light blue. And so when I want to capture a scene with a lot of light, uh, I often love to start with watercolor and then apply pastel, but be careful not to over apply pastel. And I'll talk more about pastel in a minute. Right now what I'm doing, I wanted some color to that building. So I wet the whole background, pretty wet, not super drippy wet. And I combined a little bit of a, I think it was like the, like a burnt sienna color and a little bit of yellow. And I'm just getting that in to get a little color. Now watercolor dries lighter. So after you've been painting for a while, you kind of know that, um, okay, this isn't going to go uh, end up as dark as it shows up to begin with. So I painted a little kind of a gray. I made my own little gray um, with some purple and some Payne's gray, I think a little ultramarine blue. And notice I'm just getting in the, the flower mass uh, is a little dark. You know, you've got a lot of dark leaves and everything in there. So what I did is I got a middle value in first and uh, then I'm later going to go in and get in my ideas of where my flowers are going to go, which is what I'm doing right now. I've got a little bit of a magenta, a little bit of an orange. Notice the flowers have pinks, almost like a salmony pink. And over again, I, I'm sorry to um, just keep mentioning my Patreon page, but it's where I have my full lessons. I talk about which colors I use to mix um, to get these uh, flower colors and a lot more slower speeds and just lots of commentary. Most of those videos on Patreon are over an hour and I just have a beautiful Patreon family. I just love it. Um, and on that note, let me, let me tell you how to do that. Become a patron on my Patreon page. It's super affordable. It's only $5 a month. You can cancel at any time. What I love is it's a community. I get to see your work. We get to engage and talk and, and everybody is just so kind, encouraging and helpful. So come join the family and I'd love to have you. So I've been applying some of the flowers, mostly been, I've been exploring mixing these colors to get the colors that I want. So I got some of the pink flowers in. Now I'm focusing on some of those salmony red colors. I will be adding more orange to that to kind of uh, warm the color up a little bit. And I'm placing these I'm squinting my eyes really hard and as I'm painting it, I'm just looking at where these little groupings of flowers are. And keep in mind, this is the underpainting. I'm going to be adding pastels to this. So it's really just kind of a roadmap as to where some of these flowers are and where some of the little groupings of colors are. Now I've got a nice shadow. That's one of the things I loved about this reference image is some of these shadows, um, obviously coming down underneath the flowers. The light source you can tell is from the upper left. You can tell from how the shadows are casting in that window frame and also how it's casting down underneath the flowers onto the building. And so I'm just kind of um, carving into some of these negative spaces, some of this neutral color. Again, a nice little neutral color I made. Uh, that's one advantage about watercolor is you can mix a whole lot of colors with just a few colors. Uh, there is a way you can kind of mix pastels too. That's a whole nother thing. I have videos on that. It's really cool. But um, but I do love that aspect about watercolor. I also loved not just the uh, reflections of the clouds in these windows, but there was like a building across the street or, or trees or something. That's why I put that shadow down towards those bottom window panes. Now I'm just getting in, um, mixed me up a pretty brown color and um, getting in. This is a very deep, set window. So uh, the underneath part is darker than the sides. Um, you'll see that develop. Um, but I happen to love watercolor painting. I know I have a primarily soft pastel YouTube channel. Um, I do over on my Patreon page have a few more watercolor tutorials. Um, I'd love to hear from you if uh, you'd like me to share more watercolor videos. I love it. Um, all right, let's add some greens um, in and amongst these uh, flowers. I'm mixing up a 
nice dark green now. Uh, I used uh, kind of that little olivey green color and the Payne's Gray together to get me kind of a, a nice dark green. Uh, that's not the one I'm using here. This is just that kind of that olive green color straight. It's a nice yellowy green. Um, but keep in mind another beautiful thing about, there's that dark one I said, the green and the Payne's Gray. Another wonderful thing about watercolors and mixing colors is I often like to not go for the pre-mixed green, but to mix my own green. How do you get green, guys? Think of your lessons in school. You mix blue and yellow, and often you can get more um, creative greens, and uh, you can kind of let them combine on the surface, which is fun. All right, that's it for the watercolor underpainting. It's so nice and bright. The pastels I used primarily for this is a gorgeous set. This is a unison uh, 120 half stick set. These are little half sticks. I love the size. I prefer them to whole sticks. And these are some of the blues or turquoisey blues that I used for the shutters, some of the colors in the reflection of the sky. And I keep a palette um, tray. When I'm done with a painting, often I'll rearrange them in this little tray. And it, I end up having a lot of little colors right beside me. So that's how I got started. Here's my behind the scenes. You can see kind of how I work. And let's get going. So I do have a little color on the building that I added with the watercolor, but I noticed, see all that gorgeous stucco texture on the building in that little reference image there? Uh, I noticed that it had that texture and I wanted to kind of emulate that. So this is kind of a lighter pastel. Oh, here's one of the things I wanted to mention about why watercolor versus pastel. There's just something about pastels because they're opaque. That means they're not see-through. Um, you can never really recreate that white of the paper. I don't care if you get the whitest pastel you think you can find and you mark it on a piece of white paper, it's gonna be darker. There's just nothing like that luminous white of the paper, which watercolor kind of inherently preserves with just a little transparent layer. So that's one of the reasons I love to start with watercolor. I wanted to go ahead and get in a little bit of the shadowy colors and areas, and I'm, I'm working rather light to dark. I'm not starting with my darkest darks first, and this pastel is just a little bit darker in value than the first one, and I'm going to use this little piece of chamois cloth. It's, it's like a cloth, it's not the leather kind that you like draw dry your car with. I got a huge sheet of this at the dollar store and I've been cutting little sections off for years. Now I'm using this little blue lavender to get in the little cloud shapes within the individual window panes. And sometimes when we're beginning art or painting or drawing, we overcomplicate things. All we're really doing is looking at little shapes and values. Value is the lightness or darkness of something. And that is the priority. Get your value right, even over color. You can get creative with color, but you want to get those lights and darks um, accurate and uh, your painting will feel more real and believable. Um, so as you can see, I got in some of that dark kind of uh, neutral gray blue for the shadowy side of the window pane. I'm getting in the little shapes of the clouds. And uh, now I know that that frame of the window is, uh, it, it appears white. Our brain tells us it's white. Um, it's not stark white. And later you'll see there's actually a shadow being cast on the top part of that window. You'll later see me come in and add a little shadow to that area. So I'm kind of shaping things up right now. Um, and it's okay if your lines aren't perfectly straight. As long as they're perspectively right, uh, that's important. But uh, you can have broken lines. It makes things look more painterly. So now I'm getting some of my darker areas of the sky um, with that pretty teal color. Um, painting a little negatively right now, carving in between the clouds. And now I got a little bit of a darker, it's like a dark neutral purple, almost a gray. And I'm just establishing some of my darkest values. Now here's where I'm getting that little shadow that's in the bottom, or reflection I should say, that's in the bottom two panes of the window. I, I think it was probably a house by the shape of it. And I thought it was a neat little element. And uh, you can see it looks very textural right now. I'm gonna blend it a little bit. Um, so I'm just using this little darker pastel there. I'm blending again with the chamois cloth. When I blend it, it really makes it feel more like a reflection, but try not to over now I'm using a purple. It's got a little more color to it. Uh, somehow my, my 
colors got or my values got lost. I don't know how. So I'm just kind of reestablishing them here. And I loved this color. Uh, notice on the on the window shutters. Uh, I got a little bit of it with the watercolor, but there's some gorgeous shadows that almost are like a little purple color. So that's why I use that purple there. Um, so I'm still developing uh, the clouds. Now I'm finally getting to my lighter colors in the clouds. I worked dark to light even though it's not really dark. I, I used my uh, lightest lights at the end, so to speak. Um, I loved adding this little bit of lavender to the shutters. There's some areas that, again, everything's a little textural here. The wood looked really old. So there's some um, shadowy uh, areas and purples are great for that. And uh, this one, I left it a little bit more textural and broken. Um, and uh, I develop it more as I work. And notice I've been carving into some of those flower shapes where there were little blanks there. Now this is a darker, that same dark blue, and I'm just making a little mark there to get those little clasps that are on the shutters. Here's where I'm adding that shadow that's being cast down. It's a white frame, so the shadow's not gonna be very dark. It's gonna be like a gray. And um, I, I needed to lighten up this window frame and uh, give it a little bit of, a, it had a little bit of a ridge uh, in parts of it. Again, trying not to over detail things, give just enough for interest, but what would you say the focal point of this image is? Um, well, we got a couple. One is very uh, obvious. It's the flowers. Um, they are the most different thing in the image. So it's a contrast of subject matter. Um, anytime you have a high contrast something, it makes something more of a focal point. It's a contrast of color. It's a different color than anything else in the image. And I would say the secondary focal point is the windows and that beautiful reflection. Of course, the shutters, you know, framing it out the way they do. So I'm adding a little texture to the um, frame of the window. And um, now, you know, notice sometimes I'm using kind of the edge of the pastel, like here to get a little bit more linear work. And then sometimes when I'm blocking in a larger area, I'll use the side of the pastel. Now, these are some greens that I'm looking at for my darkest greens uh, that I've already gotten a little bit with the watercolor. I'm carving it down into these flowers. And um, again, I'm just squinting my eyes and I'm looking at shapes and values. And it really is just as simple as that. We often overcomplicate things when we're starting. I know I did. But as I always say, painting's easy once you know the rules. And the rules really aren't all that hard. You just have to learn what they are and practice them. I am proof of that. Just so you know, I'm a totally self-taught artist. I did major in graphic design in college, but I taught myself everything I know about painting online. And it wasn't so easy many years ago. That's how this channel started. I started sharing what I was learning. All right, I'm just, I blended a little bit of that green with my finger. I don't finger blend a lot, but every so often. Now, time to add some color to these flowers and now I do have some really bright pink pastels and red pastels. It's a set, it's called Richeson. It's made by Jack Richeson, Richeson hand rolled pastels. And the set is called Reds and it has reds and pinks, it's gorgeous. And I keep a lot of little purple pastels near me. And why did I grab some purple for these flowers? Well, if you notice, there's a lot of these pretty pink, they almost look like azaleas. I don't know what these flowers are though. Um, in the pink flowers that you see, especially the ones underneath in shadow and this one I'm working on right now. Um, it actually has a little bit of a warm purple um, shadowy color to it. So that's why you see me sometimes adding that, uh, that pretty purple color. And with pastels, you work in layers and you typically, it's the opposite of watercolor. Uh, with pastels, you typically put your darker layers down first. And because it's an opaque medium, you can layer lighter uh, colors on top. And so we often get our darker shadowy colors. Right here, I'm just testing colors. I'm, I'm getting my color choices for these pink flowers, the salmony flowers, and there are some even lighter pink flowers. And uh, But what I was saying about the pastel layering process is you start with your darkest values. Look at like a flower and look at where the darkest, most shadowy color is. And then you layer that down and then you gradually layer your middle and then your lightest values, like where the sun is hitting on top and with watercolor like I was saying it's the opposite you really can't get the light back so you have to start light and gradually layer to your darker colors or values so uh, so it's a little bit of an opposite way to work um, but it's all learnable all right
All right, so now I've got this pretty red that I'm, um, notice the way I'm doing these flowers too. I'm not trying to paint a flower so uh, anatomically correct or whatever you'd call it with plants. <laughs> um, and now you can see how I'm layering this light, uh, almost an orangey salmony color on top. So I'm just making little scribbly scumbling marks to kind of represent the way these petals are. I want it to be very impressionistic. Um, here's where I'm adding, see, see that pretty purple? As I um, layer, I'm going to start layering some pinks on top of that, and this purple gives it a nice shadowy feel. Uh, so I'm going to speed up the rest of this pretty quickly because this is the Monet Cafe version and show you the final. And again, if you'd like to see the full tutorial, I'd love to have you become a patron of mine on my Patreon page. And if not, you have so much content here on the YouTube channel. Um, there's hundreds of videos. Uh, also, too, you can buy individual lessons on my Patreon page if you're one of those people and you just don't like to subscribe to things, even though you can cancel at any time. Um, each lesson, I've been doing this for a couple of months now, you can buy this individual lesson, uh, the, the full content for $15. So uh, just so you know, I'll have links for all of that in the description of this video. Look at how these flowers are coming to life now. See this pretty orange, um, kind of uh, salmon -y orange color, and I think you can see See now how the different layers really do uh, make the flowers feel very three-dimensional. That was just a little Prismacolor new pastel. They're little sticks of pastel. I wanted to give some life to these and I'm putting some of these kind of purpley pink flowers in now. Um, I loved how they were, all these flowers were kind of cascading in different directions. Here's where I'm adding some of the lighter uh, flowers. Again, I put in a pink that was a little darker first and now I'm adding my lighter values. Can you see how that's working? Sometimes when I speed it up like this, you you can almost see it happen um, in a more understandable way it, rather than watching it really slow. All right, so a little more green uh, just for some depth and we're getting close to finished. I hope you can see that the combination of watercolor and soft pastel really kept this scene very light and luminous. I'm using a pastel pencil just to get in some little uh, linear work in places and uh, just giving it a little signature, my simple little initials, and calling it done. And here is the final. I really hope this lesson blessed you. I pray it brought you joy in watching the creation and that it inspired you and that you will try some pastel and watercolor painting yourself. All right, everyone, as always, God bless and happy painting.